ערב טוב לכולם, שמחים שבאתם ואנחנו שמחים גם לארח אתכם פה במשרד שלנו של סימילר ווב. לי קוראים אלון, אני אחראי על האירועים ופיתוח הקהילה של, שמאחורי עולמות ה-R&D של סימילר ווב. שמחים לארח פה את ורדה. נספר לכם פה בקצרה בעצם על ה-POC שעשינו איתם, אנחנו נתחיל בעידו, דוד יעבור לספר לצד שלהם ואז יש לנו בעצם איזשהו פאנל. המיטאפ, כל השיחות יעשו בעצם באנגלית, גם כי אנחנו מקליטים וגם לטובת אה, אה, דוברי אנגלית שיושבים פה בקהל. אה, זהו, אנחנו שמחים שבאתם, בחרתם פיצה ובירה על פני הנייטרן, היינו קצת... אה, <laughs> זה הבחירה, לדעתי זו הבחירה הטובה. אם לרוץ, אז לרוץ, <laughs> אם לרוץ, אז לרוץ בבוקר. <laughs> אה, טוב, אז אה, ורדה, שימי לווב, אה, אורי פה יספר לכם קצת על ורדה ומשם נמשיך. רק חשוב להגיד, אם יש לכם שאלות, תרשמו אותן, ובעצם בפאנל נענה על השאלות שלך. מעולה. אז שוב תודה לכולם שבחרתם להגיע לפה. קצת האוסקיפינג, אני אתחיל בעברית רק להגיד את זה. ערן ואנונו, ה-CEO שלנו, מתנצל, אבל היה מקרה חירום, לצערנו, רפואי, שהוא נאלץ להיעדר. שבותינו איתו, ואנחנו נמשיך. So I, I, now I will switch to English. It's amazing. Um, so my name is Ori Reshef. I'm the VP product for uh, Varada. I've been in and around the, the data and data analytics for the last 15 years of my life. Uh, and I wanted to share with you um, a story, a personal story that happened to me 10 years ago and taught me a good lesson on how to respect data and what, what are the consequences, the business consequences of big data. So it was 2008, I worked for Nice Systems and um, we had a very, very tight head-to-head uh, -head with a competitor uh, in a large Spanish bank, a very, uh, very big one. And uh, the thing was that uh, the data on which we needed to do the analytics sat in a data center 14 kilometers from where we sat and needed to run the analytics. Uh, the size of the data was 16 gigs. Now, all of you here are laughing because 16 gigs is something that we're like drinking in a second or a minute. But then we had to uh, transfer 14 kilometers of 16 gigs uh, from one place to another to start work. That took actually three days. And we all went crazy, crazy in waiting for the data. And even worse, we had um, amazing pressure from the business side looking at us uh, like a bunch of retards that cannot even, you know, start the POC on time. We said we'll start on Monday. Monday came and went. Tuesday, Wednesday, still no data, still no work, was incomprehensible for the business side. They didn't get it. How can you guys so techy, you have like five engineers in the team, you cannot get the, grab the data. I actually tried to negotiate with the bank to go with a hard drive to the data center. They almost, almost shot me. And they just told me, shut up and look at your screen, uh, which I did. But that taught us a very important lesson. Uh, big data, the size of the data is the, a part of the problem, a part of the engineering problem. The, the, the start of, of, of big data analytics and actually be, being able to work with, with big data is Google's white paper in 2004, which introduced to the world MapReduce and completely changed the landscape and enabled all of us to do the amazing things we are doing on petabyte scale today. I think that um, I'll, I'll, I'll be bold for a second. What we think in uh, uh, Verada we did is if Google uh, created the, the first revolution in 2004 and enabled big data, what you're going to see today uh, enabled uh, sub-second queries on a petabyte scale on real big data. And that's, that's uh, a part of the new revolution in accelerating big data, enabling big data, and even going further in the democratization of, of big data. So you'll hear today, uh, you'll hear in details uh, from David about uh, Varada 
uh, and what, what we do, we'll go into the technical details. It's great to see familiar faces and a lot of uh, technical talent here in the, in the audience. Um, but first, we'll start with uh, uh, Ido that actually dealt with this uh, big data problem. And we'll hear uh, the thinking and how to solve real uh, production uh, problems of real data coming from the business side. Again, if I go back to, this, to the story, there is always a business need that will push us in the technology to uh, actually deliver uh, analytics on big data. So I'm uh, honored to uh, invite Ido Senesh to the stage to, uh, to discuss and to show us how they started uh, to think about analytics in big data. Hello. So uh, I'm Ido from Similar Web. I have very good English, so if you have questions later, you might didn't understand me, so just come later and I'll help you with Hebrew. So uh, I'm a backend engineer in SimilarWeb. In SimilarWeb, we deal with a lot of data. So uh, this slideshow is about uh, our journey in a very specific use case. It's a very interesting use case in my perspective. Uh, first of all, uh, let's start with who are we? So uh, SimilarWeb is a market intelligence pro platform. We give data and insights on all the di 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 digital aspects of the world. Uh, we give uh, data about websites, apps, industries, and we are actually the go-to-market uh, tool for investors, advertisers, marketeers, and so on. Uh, we work globally. We have over than 190 countries, and that's a lot of data, okay? And so a little bit of, uh, about our data. So we have data that comes from a global panel data, a very large uh, amount of users that give us anonymized data, a global ISPs data, a public data sources that are available to everyone. Uh, we take this whole bunch of data, we combine it, we use machine learning and all the buzzwords to make predictions and machine learning and to actually bring insights to our users on our pro pro uh, platform, on our APIs, and on different uh, services that we provide to uh, our users. So this is a bunch of some of our customers. You might know some of them, you might not, but just imagine that they use our product, okay, we need to give a very good insights and great data so they will continue use us. So take it on mind when you decide whether to use us or not. Uh, okay, so let's start with the technical challenge. Uh, so this is the keywords group use case. You pick a lot of keywords. In my case, my interest is in blockchain, but pick whatever you like. You pick a lot of uh, keywords, up to 200 uh, keywords from some industry that you find interesting. And after picking them, you get this view of up to 10,000 uh, websites, which basically means uh, when users pick these keywords, what sites they are referred to, okay? So for instance, on our case, uh, apparently CoinMarketCap is the main website that is being referred by these keywords. Uh, one important thing to see is that we have data both from our panel, this data is the traffic share, okay, how many users came to each uh, website. We have also data that is coming from other table uh, of the public resources data. For instance, the position on search engines. Okay, this data could be queried uh, for up to 36 months, okay? And uh, one important thing to notice is that each keyword may lead to up to 10,000 of websites, okay? So let's say if you pick shopping, shopping may lead to eBay, Amazon, AliExpress, and a lot of other websites that I can't remember right now. Um, another thing to understand about our use case is that nowadays, before this POC has started, uh, our main approach of tackling this, uh, this use case was bringing all the data to our servers, 
to our pro servers, aggregate them, filter them, combine them, and after all this work and process is done, we limit the results to 10,000 results, okay? So uh, just to understand the amounts of data, we'll have the next slide. <laughs> uh, but this is uh, some flow of a regular user. He picks 200 keywords. Let's say that he picks 12 months uh, analysis. And the, what happens after this is this amount of requests, 400, 800, uh, get operations for age base. This is the current uh, database that we use. And you can see how much rows it may yield, okay? Each keyword brings 10,000 results. And it sums up to pretty much a lot of data, okay? We have very strong servers with very high amounts of CPU and memory in order to provide the deserialization and the grouping and all this job that needs to be done. At the end, our happy user will only get this amount of results, okay? So it feels like too much work for too, uh, too little data. And this is one of the reasons that we have started this uh, very interesting POC. So just some numbers that we could just understand the amounts of data. Our old platform that supported only 200, K, uh, 200 keywords had dealt with this amount of data per one request, okay? This is our database that is related to the two different uh, tables. And to bring data on one request, we needed to process this amount of gigabytes, okay? So why did we start this POC? Uh, so one of our very uh, large customers asked for this feature, okay? Uh, his users are using a lot of uh, keywords. He wanted much more than 200. And if we look back, for 200 keywords, this is the amount of data that we need. So what will happen if we use this amount? It's about 35 gigabytes, okay? It's a lot of data. Imagine just inserting one request to our server. It will be very inefficient. We'll have to have a, a very large machines. And this is why we have started this uh, process. Okay, so let's start with the POC requirements. Uh, we wanted to test even more extreme cases because other users wanted even more data. So the amount of keywords that we wanted to check is 20,000, right? 20K, let's say K instead of thousands. 20K keywords. Uh, we wanted to, t to test it on the top search keywords, okay? We doesn't want to use edge cases where everything behaves as expected and with low latency. We want to push the system to its limits. We want to push down as much calculations as possible, okay? We want our database to handle most of the data. In a perfect case, we would like to get the 10,000 keywords into our servers and nothing more than that. We want fast response times. Now, uh, when I'm, I'm saying fast response times, we will later see the response times before, okay? So for us, it will be a couple of seconds, maybe in extreme cases, maybe a dozen, a 10 or 20 seconds, but not minutes or so on. Another thing that we wanted to set as a requirement is simple bulk data loading. Uh, we had other problems in other solutions that was related to this one. I'll elaborate it on uh, later. Uh, but this was, these are our requirements, and this is how we started this journey. So first of all, when a client wants a very extreme feature, you do it because you want the client to remain your client. So after very heavy server-side optimizations on the serialization issues, reading streams, many other different things that we have done, like uh, pre-calculating things as much as early as possible. We have came to these results. We were succeeded on doing 5K keywords on 18 months in about 50 seconds, okay? So we know this is not optimal, and we wanted to test new technologies that might help us achieve very uh, larger magnitude of uh, success. 
So first of all, uh, our state of mind was, let's keep our data the same and just try other technologies. Druid and RESTBase are two solutions. Druid is a solution that everyone uh, knows, I guess. It's a database that is publicly known. RESTBase is some layer that we have created in here in SimilarWeb that help us query HBase with SQL. And after trying uh, working with this setup, we came to the conclusion that we must change our data. We can't join t huge tables without uh, having the cost of the performance. So our second step was combining the entire data set that we have into one single table that allows us to query instead of joins, allows us to filter directly on this table. After doing it and writing the data to HBase, what we have tried to do was using Phoenix on HBase. Phoenix is an SQL engine that allows you to write SQL and it translates your query into HBase operations. It sounded sound pretty good, but one of the problems was bulk data loading because Phoenix allows only CSV bulk loading, at least at that time, I'm not sure today. And we had a lot of exceptions and error and issues because our data is very dirty, okay? You can imagine each and every single character that you imagine will be in some sort of key, keywords here, okay? Another issue with Phoenix on HBase was the splitting problem. In order to, to provide good performance, splits must be calculated before you create the table. Bef because we wanted to use one table that combines the entire data set, when we bulk load the data, the performance was very much degraded and we had a lot of issues on calculating the splits and making it work uh, with good latency. We finally, we, at the end, we didn't continue with this solution. So each and every one of these solutions had some drawbacks, issues that we encountered. And after a not have met uh, Vorada, uh, we've started a new POC. And uh, the POC with Vorada was very interesting. Uh, I met them, uh, my first meeting was with David and Roman. Uh, we described the use case and uh, our first homework assignment was to combine the new uh, data sets, uh, to query the new data sets with SQL, okay? HBase is, uh, you get each and every key. We've created a, a new SQL that combines the data in the way that we want. And uh, we wanted to bulk load it, the data into a Varada system. The problem that we had, and as I mentioned before, we had it also with Druid and with HBase, was that Varada was bulk loading CSV files. And as I already mentioned, the encoding issues, the comma, the different characters, had caused us a lot of problems with Varada as well. After several uh, uh, meetings, we decided to move on a new solution, moving to Parquets. Parquets, if, if you don't know the file type, is a standard, it's, it's structured, uh, the files are structured. And from this point, uh, we had a lot of, uh, we had much better life than before. The dirty data was now not a factor because the data is structured. It required from our side only several changes on our Spark, SQ, uh, Spark job. And from our other side, I believe it demanded a little bit more uh, development time, but <laughs> uh, but at the end we got a system that allows bulk loading of parquet files. Uh, we enjoyed the built-in compression when I sent them the huge amount of data on S3. And another nice bonus was smooth portability to other systems. For instance, we used Athena to validate the results that we got from uh, Varada, so it was very nice uh, feature request, I believe. Um, okay, so uh, the second large um, large challenge that we encountered was actually here. This is a sketch of our SQL. 
as you can see, it has a lot of summation, aggregations, window functions, and stuff. Everything was translated successfully to Varada side. But here you have someone that is pretty suspicious, okay, the keywords. We usually think of queries as just a small short string that contains some very basic thing, but before, when we move to a huge table instead of two joins, we now got a query that contains two, uh, 20K keywords, okay? So you could just imagine the amount of text that each of these query was look like. So uh, from our side, uh, no transformation was needed because we had no option. We want these words, okay? But Varada added a very nice feature of query compression so that this query, when it's sent to different workers, it first of all compressed. Keywords are pretty compressed, uh, compressible because these are keywords. They are not random numbers or something. And after this very small from our side uh, addition, we got two times faster uh, queries, okay? So, uh, some results, because this is the interesting part. Uh, I remind you that before we had 5K keywords on 18 months, and it's taken about uh, 50 minutes, plus minus, uh, 50 seconds, no. 50 minutes, I wouldn't stand here if it was. And so these are the results of uh, the POC. I've, I've just taken several uh, metrics that are interesting. So let's see, for instance, the 20K keywords, okay? Uh, the top keywords only are the most extensive, I don't know if extensive is the word, but the keyword that returns the much, uh, the, the larger amount of results from our data, okay? Keywords like Amazon or uh, games or whatever, or shopping. Uh, real world keywords are real world keywords, okay? Usually you don't, you are not interested on the top keywords, you're interested in keywords on your industry. So this is the, the difference between these two columns. And you can see in the results, first of all, in the top keywords, that on 20K keywords, we got 28 seconds, okay? So it's about four times the data that we used to process before. And now we don't actually do anything on our side. So our server could be much less powerful and it will still work as expected. And another interesting thing is to see the real world keywords. Okay, this is the use cases that will probably be interesting to our users. So this place means that normal user will be able to use 20K keywords of his own, and he will probably get results in about 10, 12 seconds, something like that. Uh, I don't think that we ever reached this number on our previous test because one minute was our uh, top limit that we allowed to queries to run. So these are great numbers for us. Uh, another nice uh, experiment that we have done was 15K, 50K keywords. So this one is a mixture of 5K top keywords only and 45K real keywords from real usage of users. So you can see that the number here is uh, 38 seconds. It's still better than our first a server-side based solution. So it was also very interesting and very nice to see. Uh, we also wanted to test a uh, performance while bulk loading, okay? Uh, one of our problems, uh, what I mentioned about uh, splits, was that when you create new data, when you append new data to your table, the performance is really degraded because of the new split rebalancing. I don't know if this is the right uh, terminology. Uh, but here, Varada provides us with solution that allows us to pick how much we want to invest in the bulk loading process and how much in the query process. And as far as I know, it's now zero, zero cost uh, to, to bulk load data. 
So things changed since this uh, POC have uh, taken place. We also tested for a uh, parallelism. Uh, we tried 20 concurrent users. Uh, the performance there was a little bit harder to uh, to be. Uh, it was about four times uh, the times that we have encountered in, in single usage. It's important to notice that on our platform, it's very rare for more than one or two users to use this extreme case. I mean, it's very rare uh, a use case, and we always we have caches. So only the first uh, first hit is actually hurting us. So uh, in general, it was great to work with the Varada guys. Uh, we are looking for your, uh, I don't know. Yeah, exactly, GA version. Coming up soon on the market, on Play Store. So thank you very much, guys.